Hello, I'm Martin Penny. I'm the Head of Unit for Communication in the Executive Agency for the European Research Council. And I'm joined today by Maria Leptin, the President of the ERC Scientific Council. Now, the ERC Scientific Council sets out the strategy for the, for the ERC and how this is translated into the work programme and the calls for proposals. So, Maria, many thanks for this opportunity to interview today and to find out more about some changes which the Scientific Council has recently announced to the eligibility conditions for starting grant and consolidator grant, which will take effect in 2027. Now, currently, those eligibility conditions have stayed fixed since the Scientific Council introduced the consolidator grant. So, for a starting grant, the eligibility conditions are if you're two to seven years after your PhD, you're eligible and for a consolidated grant, seven to 12 years after your PhD. Now, Maria, I think the research community would like to know more about the changes, why they've been introduced. And so I have a series of questions for you in that respect. Good. So first of all, why has the Scientific Council decided to make these changes? Well, as you know, the Scientific Council always listens to all our stakeholders, mm -hmm. um, the scientific community, uh, our panel members, uh, the staff of the agency who run the evaluations here. And we use that feedback to see, to assess continuously whether the procedures that we use here for evaluations, for awards, etc., are still fit for purpose. Okay. And uh, on the eligibility windows, we've been hearing concerns. Mm -hmm. We've been hearing concerns from the young, uh, from, from the early career researchers and we've also been hearing concerns from others and we see it ourselves when we look at the career stages of uh, the career trajectories of, of uh, early career researchers now. So we've heard the concerns and we've acted. That's what we do. Okay. But Perhaps you can tell us what are the changes? What will they be the new yeah. eligibility conditions? So the major changes, um, and this has been going on for some time now, is that the career structures, the career trajectories have changed mm -hmm. from what they used to be 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago. I see it very strongly in my own field, uh, life sciences, where I already did a postdoc of five years, but often, uh, the postdoctoral period, so literally the period after you get your PhD, mm -hmm. um, is has become longer and longer because the projects have become more complex uh, and for a number of other reasons. So people may come out of their postdoc after six years after their PhD, say, then they need a year to set up their lab, and then seven years are over, so they can't okay. start apply to a starting grant. And that seemed unfair. And conversely, what we've also been seeing, especially in fields like uh, mathematics, computer science, is that people are actually, you know, they're very different. They okay. are already independent during their PhD. Mm -hmm. So when they finally get out of their PhD, they're often made professors immediately, given independent positions. Why should they have to wait for two years before they can apply for a grant? Especially if industry is out there trying to snatch them. Of course. They should have access to ESC grants immediately. So what actually are the changes? Yes, well, as you've announced, the window for starting grants is now zero to 10 years. And then we've also changed the consolidator grants to be five to 15 years. So there's an overlap between the two windows. The reason that we need an overlap, as opposed to the neat sort of transition from starting to consolidator, is precisely because we now have different cohorts applying at different times. Okay. So the mathematician coming out of their uh, five-year grant, uh, you know, who applied in year one, mm -hmm. comes out at year six. Um, if, if the consolidator started at 10, they'd be left with a gap. I should say, of course, that one important point is that you're only allowed to apply, no, to have once a starting and once a consolidator. Okay. Once you get to advanced, you can have as many, as many as you like if you manage to uh, write as many super proposals as, as, as are judged fundable. So that's why, you know, you can't, if you have the flexibility in step one, you have to have the same flexibility in step two. So for both starting and consolidator grants, there'll be 10-year windows. Mm -hmm. 
Will those 10-year windows not discourage junior applicants from applying? I, I don't think that should be the case. For one thing, and I've said this always, um, you know, the panels are very capable of distinguishing somebody early in the window and late in the window. Okay. And their merits, they know that you'll have more papers mm. when you've been in the job for longer. Sure. Quite apart from the fact that we don't count papers anyway. But the panels are able to distinguish. But even apart from that, I don't think this is very likely to happen because the two year into his career mathematician or her career will not be compared with the nine year into their career life scientist. They're in different panels. So, uh, you know, the each, each evaluation panel in each field knows the career structure and that's what they'll get. So I don't think um, that is so likely. So those two things, the one that the panel knows to distinguish senior from junior anyway and takes that into account, and the fact that this is really by field, I think will deal with that problem. And okay. I, I, I don't think the applicants should worry about that. Okay. But one of the things the applicants will want to know is when will these changes take place? Yes. So um, we're talking about them now and we've decided them now. But uh, because of other changes that we've made that need to be implemented, we've delayed this by a year. And so they will be, uh, they will apply to people who apply next year, okay. but then come into effect in 2027. So for grants that are awarded in 2027. Okay, so this will take effect in the 2027 work program effectively, yes. which will be adopted yes. in the summer of next year. Exactly. Okay. One of the things which the Scientific Council has always championed is ensuring equal opportunities and equal chances uh, in, our, in the way in which our eligibility windows have, uh, are applied. So they've introduced a series of extensions which can apply if you had maternity leave, parental or paternity leave, uh, specialist medical training, military service, um, and, and so on. Will these eligibility windows continue to apply with these yes. new, new eligibility yes. conditions? Yes, if you have reasons for needing an extension and all the reasons you just mentioned are valid reasons, then you get an extension of the eligibility period just as now. Very That's clear. not been touched at all. Very clear. Now, Maria, I have one final question. Imagine I'm a researcher six years after my PhD and I applied for the starting grant call in 2025. Now, I wrote a good proposal, but it was so. awarded... I'm sure I did. Mm. Um, but it was awarded a B in step one of, of the evaluation. And so I'm not eligible to apply in 2026. And also then I'd be out of the current window. But with these new conditions, would I be eligible, eligible to apply again for starting grant in 2027? Yes, you're there, very lucky there. So when this is introduced, it applies to everyone, whether they used to be covered by the five years or not, it applies to everyone. So yes, you're lucky, you can apply in two years. Maria, thank you very much for this opportunity to interview you. I'm sure these answers will be very useful for the research community, and I hope we get an opportunity to interview again, you again very soon. Absolutely, and you out there, apply please.